everybody, it's the War Hipster here, coming at you with another Contrast Plus painting tutorial. Yes, today we are painting Lord Croak. Now this is a long time coming. I've been meaning to do it for ages and I just haven't had the time, but now is definitely the time. A lot of you have been waiting for this one very patiently, so I thank you for that. And we're going to be painting him up today. He has been primed in Wraithbone, and I should quickly point out that he has been built in a sub-assembly. Just one. So Croak is one of the sub-assemblies, and his large chair is the other. Now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be painting the model in quite a weird way. Effectively, rather than kind of trying to do all of it at once, we're going to take this section by section, and we're going to paint our way up the model. So we're going to kind of start down here and make our way all the way up to the top. Then we will do him and then the whole thing will be finished. So we're going to start with the chair, then Croak, and then we'll have a really good time, I'm sure. <laughs> so we're going to grab our paints, grab our brushes, and for the second time, just in case I didn't actually say it, can't remember already, he has been primed in race, but I think I did say it. Anyway, we're going to grab our paints, grab our brushes, and then we'll be right back. So the place we're going to start is on this bit of rock. <laughs> this is what I said, this is going to be quite a weird tutorial, right? Because it's not going to be that sort of typical war hipster battle ready thing. But what we are going to do is we're going to start by taking some croak green. And we're going to apply this over the top of the entirety of this bit of rock just like this, because it would be fitting to use Croak Green, right? Except no substitutes. So we're gonna get this all over and we can helpfully take this one section by section. You will have to do some brush gymnastics to get around that bit of vine. But trust me, this is all gonna lead to the right spot. Just have to trust the process, guys. I have led you this far, and I have not led you astray. So with that done, we're then going to do the same thing on the bit of rock next to it. And this time we're going to start from the top. And this will make no material difference other than kind of just coaching you guys on where this has to go. And again, use the back part here to determine where your sections are. However, unhelpfully compared to the other one, the back of this rock is pretty much all one long bit. So you kind of want to get to here on the one side, like that. Gonna have to just kind of manage our, kind of let the paint direct us. A little bit because so we want to get to a place where we can kind of stop it and we won't leave any tide marks okay, that's not something we want right now
Just keep an eye on it. And just absorb that paint and move it if you need to. Just keep rotating it. So if you focus too much on one side, you might turn it and discover that your bristles overlapped a little bit like mine has done just there. And what you want to do is just gently wipe the brush over it, barely touching that surface to absorb the paint. Got another outside section just here, which you can do quite helpfully. Just like that. Again get the current green all over, check the section, got the overlap. So I'm gonna to have to do that little bit down there as well. Gonna check on the inside, got the overlap. So I'm gonna do that bit now. And now, I'm gonna check this back bit. As you can see, we've missed this bit. So we're gonna very carefully just go along there. But again, check for the overlap. Just very gently lift that paint off and get us along. So with that done, what we're now gonna do is we're gonna work on this one because it's got that blend that goes all the way through. So the color we're gonna use is some Griff Charger Gray. And what we want to do is we want to cover it all over the top of this section, this section, and then we want to blend out like a third of this one. So we're going to apply the Griff Charger Gray like this. Again, just being real careful here. So that we're getting a nice smooth finish. that and we're going to come down to the next bit Like that, and then down here, we're going to apply a little bit of the Griff Charger Grey, like that. And then, going to wash the brush. And then we're going to blend it out just there, like that. And then we just need to do the same thing on all four points. So add the Griff Charger Grey coming down. Wash the brush. Blend it out. Griff Charger Grey. Wash 
brush the brush. Blend it out. And then once more, with feeling. <laughs> Get the Griff Charge Grey. Wash the brush. And then blend it out. And just check for any overlaps. I think we're good. Whilst we're waiting for that to dry, what we're going to do is we're going to take some skeleton hoard and we're going to apply this over the top of all the kind of wrecked rock down here at the bottom of the base. And so with that skeleton horde applied, we're then going to take Saigor Brown. I'm going to apply this over the top of all the soil just here. Now you might be thinking, why haven't you done the other side? Well, as mentioned, we're taking this section by section. And that does include the basing. So with that side all brown now done, these two sections are now dry. This one wasn't before. So we're gonna work on this one next. And the color we're gonna be using once again is Griff Charger Gray. And we're gonna be bringing it up and then we're gonna be blending it, and this is gonna be quite difficult to point out, in here up to around about there. Sort of about just over two thirds, or rather just over a half. And so this is one of those things again, where you have to just be real careful Big broad brush strokes, take it a section by check section. So we're going to start down here. Like that. Then we go over the top. And do the underneath like that, flip it over, and then we do the other side. And then we should check for any of those overlaps. Once we've done our brush gymnastics, like that, so you can see just under there, we've got a little bit of an overlap. So we're just gonna get in there and pull that off. There we go, marvelous. Then we're gonna do the next section. Coming up to here. Make sure we get it in that crevice. Come over the top. We're a little bit heavy here, so I'm just gonna gently dab my brush in there just to absorb some of that. Now this is where it gets tricky, of course, because you might be able to see just there. I've actually got a bit of Griff Charge Gray on there and I don't want it. So just take my brush, clean brush, and remove it. Flip ourselves over. And do this bit just here. Come up to 
just there, that corner. See, Discord agrees. This is very much one of those videos where we could go quickly, but you guys like the step-by-steps, right? So this is where it gets a little bit tricky. So we use this back part as our guide. So this is where we're gonna kind of, just here actually, is where we're gonna finish. So we're actually gonna come up to there, and then we're gonna blend, right? So we're gonna start down here. Do this little section, get up to there, keep going, keep going, keep going, and stop. Like that. One quick pass back the other way, just to remove some of that paint. Wash the brush, and then we blend it out. Like that. Then on the back, same thing. So you just want to kind of hold it at this angle so you can see what you're doing. I'm going to start just down here. Get it all over that little section. Come up to here. There. Wash the brush. and then blend it. Gently correcting there. I actually do need to just add a little tiny little bit more just around here, like that. Wash the brush. There we go. Then we're going to do the inside. I'm going to do that from this angle. So we're going to wash the brush, bring it round, keep bringing it round up to there. You can't really see it on the inside, which is nice. However, you do just want to check it from both angles for any slightly darker spots. I'm just gonna go in there, clean brush again. Just pick it up. Like so. And then I'll grab a little bit of Griff Charge Gray and then along this edge. Bring it up to around about there. Again, just looking for a nice smooth area. Just gonna check the outside for any overlaps. And we've got one just here, which we don't want. And then just here, we're gonna blend it. Like that. So with that done and drying on the this one, what we're going to do now is we're going to come back to this one because this one is now fully dry, and we're going to take a roughly two parts Lamia medium to one part Black Templar mix, and we're going to do a blend coming from the top down to around about halfway on this section here. So we're going to apply this Black Templar. like this over the top section. That's easy enough to do, but again, because we've got thinned Black Templar, you just want to be careful and watch out for any uneven coverage. And any 
overlaps. Got a little one just on that side. And one quite big one there. Then, on this one here, start on this side, bring it over halfway, like that, wash the brush, and then we just Blend the two together like that. Same on the inside. Wash the brush. There we go. And on this side, got quite a large overlap there. Do the whole thing. Like so. And then one more time. Again, watch out for that. And then we blend. Check the inside. We're still waiting for this back one here to dry. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some croak green and we're going to apply this over the top of this one just here. Now, same principles apply as always. Just be careful. Mop up any overlaps. Use these nice big broad brush strokes to get this croak green all over. So with that done, again, in the interests of saving some time, we're now going to take some Saigor Brown, slightly different order to how we did it on the other one, and we're going to apply this over the top of all the soil. So with that now done, we're going to take a roughly two parts Lamium medium to one part black Templar mix. I'm going to blend this one. Now, once again, I'm just going to demonstrate on here on the back. We're going to come up to around about here. Okay, so I'm going to start at the towards the bottom. We can get this all over. This bottom section.
like that. I'll do a little bit more. And just got to keep checking for those overlaps. There we go. Marvellous. Next one. Going to come up to here. Like that. Do the inside track. Coming up to there. Now, we're in a bit of trouble. So, <laughs> what we're going to do with the black Templar is we're going to start at the bottom here on the outside. I'm going to bring it up to the break, just there. Bring it up to the second break. Make sure we got that filled in. We're then going to wash the brush and then we're going to do a little bit of blending. Just there, like that. It's quite shallow. And then on the detailed sides, we're going to bring it up just that little bit further. Like that. Wash the brush. There we go. Then we've got the inside bit to do. We're nearly there. Just gonna check for an overlap on that side. Nope. Wash the brush. Little bit of blending. Then we've got the last bit in here to do. Coming up to there. It's got a little bit of overlappage going on here. Don't want that. There we go. Perfect. So with that now done, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Corellia green shade and we're going to use this a little bit as a corrector and to add a little bit more darkness. So just down here on the tip of this one, we're going to add some Corellia green shade. Like that. And then 
here on this bit because the blend isn't quite as nice as we would want it to be. What we're going to do is we're going to take that Karelia green shade and just up to there, we're going to apply it. Like that. We're going to wash the brush. And then we're going to just blend it just a little bit. Just like that. So with that done, we're going to do something a little bit easier now. What we're going to do is we're going to take some thin down Retributor armor. I'm going to apply this over the top of these bits that we haven't done yet on this outside ring, wing. Ring? Not wing. Not a wing. He's not flying. Well, he is flying. He's hovering. And it's once again back to Griff Charger Grey. Trust me, we're going to be going back and forth a lot. But what we're going to do is we're just going to apply this over the top of the entirety of this lower bit of rock. Blending isn't quite as difficult on this bit. And with that done, we're then going to take some Skeleton Horde and we're going to apply this all at the top of these rocks. So with that done, one more time with feeling, we're going to take a roughly two parts Lamium medium to one part black Templar mix. We're going to do a little touch of blending just over here on this little section. And we just need to do half of this stone. Wash the brush. Blend it out. Grab a little bit more Black Templar here. A bit overzealous with the blending. gentle with it sometimes.
So with that done, what we're going to do now is we're going to take some thin down iron warriors and we're going to apply this over the chains on this bit of stone. And you might have noticed that I did do a little bit of gold just there on that Stormcast helmet because I still had some thinned down from when we did the other Retributor armor sections over here. It's the same gold. We do just need to get this Iron Warriors all over like this. What we'll also do is we'll apply this over top of the Chaos Warrior helmet. So with that done, just whilst we're waiting for the Iron Warriors to dry, we're going to take some Reichland Flesh Shade. I'm going to use this to shade the gold. So with that Reichland Flesh Shade applied, we're then going to take some null oil. I'm going to apply this over the top of the skulls. Like that. And over the top of the silver. With that null oil applied, we're then going to take some Agrax Earthshade and we're going to apply this over the top of the horns on the Chaos Warrior's helmet. Down here. And with that done, we're then going to take some Seraphim Sepia and we're going to apply this over top of the stonework. So with that done, we've actually done this kind of first section up to a war hipster battle ready. And it looks, wow, well, it looks pretty good. So what we're going to do is rather than take it to the next level now, we can actually do that a little bit later. So we can get the rest of the kind of base coats done as we go on. And it makes sense to do this, right? Because we've got the, vein, the veins, the vines here actually touching in on this section. Now, rather than doing the vines next, because we've got some slightly awkward bits of stonework to have to get to, we're gonna do the stonework of the chair. So we're kind of graduating up to the next level now. So the color we're gonna be using is Black Legion. And we're gonna apply this over the top of, well, all of the stonework. And as far as I can deduce, it's pretty much all black apart from these kind of little engine things on the other side, which is why I'm just being careful around the kind of dome-like objects on the underside. So I'm just gonna start at the bottom, get the bottom done up to here, and then move my way up systematically. I've got the box art open in front of me. I just want to try and avoid those vines, 
But if I get some of this on here, it's not the end of the world because I can just use a little bit of wraith bone just to restore them, restore them to their former glory. So with all of that Black Legion applied, as you can see, it's quite a lot of it. So what we're going to do now is we're going to dry brush it because we need to highlight that all up. Because once that's done, we can just leave it alone. So we're going to dry brush it using some Eshin Grey. And this is going to be a little bit tricky at times and places. But what we're basically looking to do is to get a nice kind of greyish texture all over our black. So it's not going to initially look like it's doing very much, but it is just elevating that colour up just enough. For us, so for example, that little section just there is already looking perfect. I'm going to come in around here. It doesn't matter if this is a little bit heavy in places, that's all okay. We are just looking to get this all over. When it comes to like the smooth areas on the back here, just give it a very gentle circular motion. So with that Eshin Grey dry brush applied all the way around, what we're then going to do is we're going to take some Dawnstone and we're going to additionally dry brush this over the top. Only this time we're going to be a lot more careful about how we apply this. So we're looking to just kind of catch the edges. that sort of thing. Like this, and then when it comes to the actual wider open bits, we're gonna very gently stipple this. And finally, we're gonna take some Administratum Grey. I'm gonna use this to pick out the kind of sharpest points. So for example, this bit around the main body of it, we've got this corner, and this one here, at the front of that armrest. Put this little bit up here. We've got the front bit. Just in there. Put that little corner just in there. Around here, like that, along this edge as well, just there, you get it. <laughs> that was my wrist, for those wondering at home.
So with that all done, what we're now going to do is we're gonna work on all the vines. Now the color we're gonna be using first is some Gut Ripper Flesh. And we're gonna apply this all over them, which might seem weird, but when you look at the box art, these vines kind of, they transition between brown and green quite a bit all over the model. So I'm gonna start with the green and then we're gonna bring them down a color. Also, don't worry if you've got any of the grey from the dry brushing on the vines. It's actually kind of what you want because we're getting lots of different colours in here. That's exactly what we need. So with all that gut ripper flesh applied, what we're now going to do is we're going to take two colours, Mantis Warriors Green and Cycle Brown. I'm going to apply this over the top of all of the vines and we're going to kind of chop and change it and do some blending and kind of just have a little bit of fun. So I'm going to start here with some Mantis Warriors Green. I'm just going to come up from the bottom of this vine just here. I'm going to apply this up to kind of around about there. Like that, gonna come all the way around. Get right in there, like that. Then I'm gonna wash the brush, grab some side or brown, and then just start applying it. Over the top, of this kind of section up here. Going into the Mantis Warriors green, but that transition isn't strong enough. So I'm gonna wash the brush one more time, then grab some Mantis Warriors green. And just where I want the colors to kind of start merging together, I'm gonna to apply some more Mantis Warriors green. And I'm just gonna start bringing it all the way up. Just like that sort of thing. And then I'm just gonna continue like that. It is dealer's choice at this point, really. So I'm gonna grab the Mantis Warriors Green. I'm gonna apply this over this vine just here. Like that. Wash the brush. Grab some more Saigal Brown. And apply this. Like that, wash the brush, grab a bit more Mantis Warriors, and again, just start applying this to sections. But I want there to be a bit more of a stronger blend, and also do a little bit of mixing on the model. So with all of the vines now done, as you can see, what we're now gonna do is we're gonna take some Carandrus Green and we're gonna apply this over the top of all of our leaves.
So with that done, we're now going to work on the rest of the spinny things. So what we're going to do is once again, you guys know the drill by now. What we're going to do is we're going to take some croak green. I'm going to apply this over the top of. All of this stone. Just take it one thing at a time. Make sure you watch for those overlaps. And just be careful around the other ones that you've painted. So with that croak green applied, uh, we are going to do the blending now again at this point. It's the same colours as before as we did on this section, this section and this section. However, we do now have three new sections which we will go through. They won't be as long clips as before, um, I hope, but <laughs> we're going to go through them again just bit by bit because it can get a little bit overwhelming to do it all at once. So the three sections that we have are this ring. So this one here that comes around, there's a big gap there, and then it comes down here. The next section is this one that comes all the way around and it's joined here by this bit of vine, which we haven't done on purpose, coming around here. And then the third section is this one up here. Now we're gonna start with this one up here because it's the easiest. And <laughs> we're gonna be using Griff Charger Gray first. And we'll do all the Griff Charger Grey at once, but we'll do it section by section so you see what's going on. So, Griff Charger Grey on here first. And we're going to start it actually at this end because it's darker at this end and lighter at this end. We want the oldest brush stroke of the application of paint to be at this end so we get the newest bit just here for when we do the blending. So, we're going to apply this Griff Charger Grey over pretty much all of it. So, we're coming up to that little section just there. We're going to wash the brush and then we're going to do our little blending thing like that. And get a little bit more Griff Charger Grey. Maybe over the lip just there. Coming up to where we finished before. Wash the brush. And then we blend it out like that. And then we obviously replicate this all the way around. Got way too much paint on our brush there, but that's okay. We just wipe some of it off my finger. Bring it up to around about there. Wash the brush. And then blend it out like that. We've got the end to do just here. And then we've got the underside and the other side to do. The underside is the easy bit. Just coming at it from this end and there and there. Wash the brush. Blend it out there. Then we do the back bit. Just 
just check for any overlaps. We haven't got an overlap there. Wash the brush. And then just blend it out there. And then on the other bit of this section, we're then going to do the entirety of this little bit of rock up here. Just check that you don't touch the brush like I have on the bit that you've just done. It's okay if you catch it in time. You can just treat it as extra, extra color for the blend. Get this all over. Like that. And similarly, we get this all over this section as well. And just make sure you don't touch it onto that previous bit. And then all we need to do is basically just add a little bit of it over this side, kind of up to around about there. Wash the brush. And then blend it out. So the next one is this one, the one that comes all the way around here. Now it looks initially like it's one big piece. However, as mentioned before, it is held together with this vine and that's what we need to bear in mind here. <laughs> so what we have is we actually have three areas of blending. So on this one that comes diagonally around here, what we are gonna be doing is we're gonna be going from dark at this point, just here, all the way down to around about that little area there. I'm going to bring it down a little bit further on this side till just past this previous bit of stonework that we did before. On the other one, we're going to do again, coming from darker around here to around about sort of that little section just there. And then we're going to be doing the same thing at this end. So it goes darker, lighter, darker on this right hand piece, the, the longest piece. And on the left hand piece, it just goes from darker to lighter. So with that in mind, we're gonna take the Griff Charger Gray. I'm gonna start applying this. I'm gonna apply this over this bit of rock here first. It's the easy bit. Getting this all over. degree of brush gymnastics that does have to go on here. And then on this section, we've got all of this bit gets colored in. Now we're going to bring it down to the bit that connects to that previous bit that we did before. Like that. We're going to wash the brush and then we're going to blend it out, just moving that paint around. Then we're going to do the outside edge.
like that. Don't need to do any blending just there because the rock blocks it. And then the slightly trickier bit is this bit round here. And you kind of have to paint without being able to see it. You have to trust yourself, but it is helpfully divided into some sections. So what you'll see, which is what I can see, you might be able to see on the camera, I don't know. You'll see that it gets covered up by the rock on the inside track, so that's good. You need to keep bearing in mind those overlaps, which we've got one just here. Bring it around. There we go. We got it. This is as far as we go. Again, we just bring it around the outside. Wash the brush. And then we blend it. And then from this angle, we can come under and apply Griff Charger Grey to the inside track, wash the brush, and then smooth it out. You should have it all finishing at roughly the same spot. There we go. Lovely. Then on the other side, it's pretty much the same sort of deal. We're going to come out from the underside, we're going to come up to, like I said, round about here. You can come up to the end here. And we'll just quickly do the outside as well because we've got a nice big overlap there, which we didn't want, but there we go. To move quickly sometimes. Wash the brush. Cheeky little bit of blending. Just there, where the colors meet. Let me do the inside track. Got a little overlap just there. Maybe if you spotted me doing it. There we go. See it? Blend that out like that. And for our last trick on that edge, we're just going to, from underneath it, apply some Griff Charge Grey coming around. Again, almost impossible to film. There we go. And then all that's left to do is this tip. If you want to go past our previous ring I did right at the beginning. Like that. Come around this side. Pick up the trail there. Up to around about there. Wash the brush.
then just blend it out like that. And we've got this side as well. Like that. Then we wash. And then we just blend it out. And then we finish things off by doing the underside. So for the last time with Griff Charger Grey, we're then gonna do this inner ring. And this one's the easiest one to explain. So we'll only do one of these because basically it's from this end to there and this end into there. So I'm gonna take the Griff Charger Grey and we're just gonna start getting to work. I'm gonna once again, just color in the tip over here. Like that, and then further in, we're going to color in the next section. Like that. Similarly, again on the underneath, just watch out for those overlaps. Like that, and then on the next section along, I don't know how well you can see this. You can see it just in there. We only need to do that much with the Griff Charger Grey. Wash the brush, and then from this angle. Just do a little bit of blending like that. Same on the underside, just do a little bit of that section. And we come up to the bind. Wash the brush, do a little bit of blending. And then, because I'm a glutton for it, we're gonna do all of this section just here. We come up to where the ring is. And then on this side, we're gonna do about half of it. Wash and then blend. Like that. So, with all of that Griff Charger Grey applied to all of those areas, we're now gonna do the two parts Lamia medium to one part black templar mix now because you've already seen me do this it's basically the same thing again we're going to take the mix and we're going to do roughly a half of each of those griff charger gray sections and then we're going to blend it out now i won't film all of them because we've already done it before and you're probably sick by now of seeing 10 minute takes from me but what we will do is we'll start off with this section so we're going to start the oldest place just there we're going to get the black templar all over Round about half of the Griff Charger Grey, like that. Wash the brush, and then just 
a little bit of blending. Same again. Wash the brush. Black Templar in there. Do the underside. And then we do the back. Keep an eye out for any of those overlaps. So with that all done, the hardest part is now finished. And it looks pretty cool, even if I do say so myself. So what we're gonna do now is move on to completing some of these other colors, and these are gonna be pretty quick. So the color we're gonna be using next is some skeleton horde and we're going to apply this over the top of all of these large tusky horn things that he's got scattered around so there's the three underneath and the four on top of the chair So with that now done, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Croxagore scales and we're going to apply this over the top of this kind of front bit down here. And with that done, whilst we're waiting for it to dry, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Dawnstone and we're going to apply this over the top of our engines down here. And with that done, we're then going to take some Saigor Brown and we're going to use this to paint in the remaining vines that we haven't done yet. So we've got the little ones that are on our kind of spinning rings of power. So with that done, we're then gonna take some Griff Hound Orange and we're gonna apply this to the insides of the mouths of our serpents on the armrests.
So with that now done, what we're going to do is we're going to take some thinned down Retributor armor. I'm going to apply this over a lot of different details. This isn't it for the gold, but this is going to be quite a lot of the gold. So we're going to be looking for things like the little trinkets hanging down here, as well as the trim on this front bit. So you've got these kind of little cog designs going around the outside. Like that sort of thing. We're going to be looking at the kind of the tongue down here. We're going to do the teeth as well of this statue of jade, I think is what it's supposed to be. Like that sort of thing. We're going to be picking out areas such as like the trim across here. I'm going to be looking for things like this, these bits. Just as we did over here. We're going to be looking at the trim on the back plate here, but also these large orbs. Looking at the base of all of our horns and things. And on the back, we're also going to be looking at this kind of area here, the trim down here. And we're also going to do this whole section around here as well. There's a lot of gold, basically. So with that done, I've added some Carandras green to those extra leaves because I missed them before. And what we're going to do now is quite simply take some black Templar. And we're going to apply this over the top of all the snakes. So with all that black Templar applied, don't worry, we are going to come back to the snakes a little bit later. But what we are going to do is we're going to take some Croxagore scales once more and we're going to apply this over the little dome in here. Like that. Then we're going to overlap it slightly onto the gold. Just like that. With that now done, we're then going to take some Targor Rage Shade. I'm going to apply this over the top of these stone tablets. And with that now done, we're then going to once again take some Seraphim Sepia and apply this over the top of the head, just down here. So with that done, all of the base coats are now on, <laughs> on the second part, if you can believe it, of this model. So this part is looking pretty good. The skink, we're just going to leave for now. We'll do him later. Yes. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add some shades and we're going to once again use some Reichland flesh shade. I'm going to use this to shade all of the gold. So with all of that done, we're then going to take some Caraberg Crimson and we're going to apply this over the top of our Griffhound orangey bits.
in the serpent's mouths. Like that. And then what we're also going to do with the caribou crimson is on our snakes, we're just going to pick a few of them out. With that done, we're then going to take some Nuln oil and we're going to apply this over the top of our engines under here that we did with the, with the Dawnstone. And with that done, we're then going to take some Tyran Blue. I'm going to apply this over the top of our Croxagor Scales areas. And finally, we're going to take some croak green and we're going to apply this over the top of our little face down here. Just avoiding the teeth. Like that. And what you can also do with the croak green you can apply it over some of the leaves. Just add a little bit of variation and visual interest. It'll be a very subtle effect, but it's enough. So with those shades all applied, the chair is now what I would call a war hipster battle ready. It's looking pretty cool. So what we're going to do is we're now going to work on the big statue at the top and the colour we're going to be using first is Croxagore scales. And essentially what we need to do here is much like when we did our large areas, we basically want to take this a section at a time. So we want to get a nice smooth finish here. So we're just going to get it up to there. That makes sense as a place for me. I'm going to come round the outside. Flip it round. Just like that. Just whilst we're waiting for all that Croxagore scales to dry, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Black Templar and we're going to apply this over the top of this ring. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take a roughly one-to-one -one mix of contrast medium and pterodon turquoise. And we're going to apply this over the top of the jade statue, but not all of it. 
So what we're looking to do is we're looking to start it here, like that. And then we want to start bringing it along. Like this. And then I'm just gonna make sure that we've got a nice smooth coat all over it by just finishing the other side. Perhaps the same area. like that and then slightly differently what we're going to do is over the top of the head is we're going to apply this and then we're going to do a little bit of a blend so we're going to apply it from that kind of connection point we're going to avoid the tongue Like that. We're then going to wash the brush. And then we're going to get in there. And so with that done, we're then going to do the same thing again with the exact same mix. A roughly one to one mix. Contrast medium. And tear it on turquoise. So with that done, we're then going to take some Corellia green shade and on the outside track, we're just going to add a little bit of shading like this up to around about there on both sides. Then we're going to wash the brush. And then we're just going to blend it out. It doesn't look like it's kind of a very subtle or a very gradual trans transition but that is how it is on the box <laughs> so with that now done what we're going to do is we're going to take some thinned down retributor armor and we're going to apply this over top of all of the jewelry and over the top of that large sun icon. So with that done, I have one personal affectation that I like to do on my Seraphon to unite all of them, and that's do all the feathers with the same two colors. And those are Bad Moon Yellow and Striking Scorpion Green. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. So we're going to take Bad Moon Yellow. We're going to apply this all over the top of the feathers. Just like that. We then wash the brush. Grab a little striking scorpion green. Add it towards the tips. Like that, wash the brush, grab a little bit more bad ring yellow. And 
I'm just gonna dab it in there to let those two colors flow together like that. And so with that done, we're now gonna once again take some Reichland Flesh Shade and we're gonna apply this over the top of all the gold. So with that done, the entirety of the chair is at what I would call a war hipster battle ready. However, there is one large bit right there, the skink, that is still very much bare. So we're going to work on that now, and it's not actually that complicated. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by taking some Space Wolves Grey, and we're going to apply this all over the top of all of his skin. Now normally we've done this with like Frost Heart or whatever, but when you look at the box art for croak this little skink is quite cool there's a bit more blue in it than we have here but that's okay that's what we've got shades for so we're gonna get the space walls gray all over all of his skin And then once that's done, we'll come back. So with that done, we're then going to take some Tyran Blue. And we'll use this to shade all of the soft skin, but not the scales on our skink. And with that Tyran blue applied, we're then going to take some Shaiish purple. I'm going to apply this over the top of the feathers on our skink. And with that done, we're then going to take some Black Legion. I'm going to apply this over the top of the teeth, the claws, the leather, and the spear. And so with that all done, we're then going to take some Talisar Blue and we're going to apply this over the top of the spear tip. And with that done, and then going to take some thinned down Retributor armor once again. I'm going to use this to paint in pretty much all of the remaining details. So, with all of that Retributor armor applied, we're then going to take some Reichland Flesh Shade and once again, we're going to shade all of the gold. Now it might seem like I've repeated myself a lot here, and I have, that's true, but painting the model this way, in this nice methodical way, especially something as complex as this, 
is the ideal way to go about it. It's the same thing you would do if you were painting it in sub-assemblies, for example. So with that done, the throne is now what I would call a war hipster battle ready all over. And it's looking fabulous. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take this to the next level by adding some highlights. And then we're going to do Croak himself. And then the whole thing will be finished. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off nice and simply by taking some thinned down Night Quest of Flesh. And we're going to use this to add a couple of little highlights to the brownest areas of our vines. So with that all done, what we're then going to do is we're going to take some deep kin flesh and we're going to gently dry brush this over the top of all of the blended stonework. Like that. And we're also going to gently dry brush this over the top of the snakes. So with that done, we've actually achieved quite a lot on the chair. There really isn't that many highlights to do here. The contrast is doing a lot of work for us. But what we are going to do is we're going to do probably the trickiest bit, and that's to take some thinned down lother and blue. And we're going to use this to highlight all of our areas that we've done with Croxagor scales and the various other things. And this is going to do more on some areas than it is on others. But that's the point. So with that lother and blue applied up here, 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 and here, what we're now going to do is going to highlight the sharpest corners of each of those sections with some thinned down Baharoth blue. So with that done, all of our jade bits are now finished. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some thinned down Luganath orange now. I'm going to use this to highlight those griff hound orangey areas. So with that Luganath orange applied, we're then going to take some blue horror. I'm going to use this to highlight our skink.
So with that now done, we're then going to take some thin down Dawnstone. I'm going to use this to highlight any black details that we haven't already done. So this will be things like the claws. And the teeth and the spear haft just there like that on the skink. I think we've done the rest of them when we did our dry brush earlier. And so with that done, we're then going to take some Blood Angels Red and we're going to apply this over the top of all of our red gems. So we've got one just here. On this kind of front bit. We're gonna apply this over the top of the skink's eyes. Like so. And then we've got a couple of red gems just up here. So with all of those highlights now applied, we move on to the longest and, well, not most difficult part. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take some thin down Liberator Gold. And what we are going to be doing here is we're gonna do a couple of different things. So firstly, on like kind of flat areas, such as this trim right here, we're going to be applying this as a relay. Just like that sort of thing. Whereas on the smaller details, we're going to pick out the edges. Whereas on things like the outside edges, like these bits here, I'm gonna pick out the trim. And the gem. And we're gonna edge highlight the little section. This will take a bit of time because there is a lot of gold. But just take it one step at a time. Be nice and methodical. So with that done, to finish it off, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some Talisar blue. And for all these tiny little gems scattered around the model, I'm just gonna apply this over the top. So with that done, Croak's Throne is now finished. We don't need to do any more to it. There's so much going on here. It already looks amazing. So we are going to pop it to one side. We're not gonna look at it any longer. And instead what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick up Croak himself. So we're just gonna readjust the camera slightly and then we'll be right back. So here we are then, Croak the frog himself, toad himself, whatever species he is. We're going to be painting him up now. And as mentioned already, he has been primed in wraith bone, just in case you guys have forgotten. And the color we're going to be using first is gut ripper flesh. And we're using this to pick out all of his skin. Now you do have to be careful around here because, well, there's lots of skin kind of hiding in and around all of the wraps and things. So 
We're starting off here so that we got kind of a nice guide for where all the skin is. And I believe I've gone with a death mask. There is the other version of him, which you can see more of his face. But I just prefer this one, I thought it looked cooler. A little bit more complex as well. So with all that gut ripper flesh applied, we're then gonna take some black Templar and we're gonna apply this over the top of the fangs here. Like that. We've got a kind of gums, I guess, inside there. Like that. And on the back here, we've got his shell. And so with that Black Templar all applied, what we're then gonna do is take some Saigor Brown. And we're gonna pile this over the top of all of his bandages. So with that Saigor Brown all applied, what we're then gonna do is we're gonna take some Pox Walker. We're gonna use this to shade all of Croak's skin and his black shell on his back. So with that popped walker applied, what we're then going to do is we're going to take some dark oath flesh and we're going to apply this around his chin. Like this. And then we're going to wash the brush. And then towards the base of his body, we're just going to pick it up, creating a little blend just there. We're going to do the same thing on his hands and on his feet. Just like that. Wash the brush. And then just pick it up. Like that. So with that done, we're then going to take some Black Legion and we're going to apply this over the top of the kind of staffs, the hafts of his staffs. And so with that done, we're then going to take some Blood Angels Red and we're going to apply this over the top of this tassel. With that Blood Angels Red applied, we're then going to take Talisar Blue. I'm going to apply this over top of this orb, just here, and a little gem set in the top of his other scepter. Again, I know this is a personal affectation. The feathers are different on the box art, but this is for me. So we're gonna be doing the feathers and we're gonna be using Bad Moon Yellow and Striking Scorpion Green. And we're gonna, once again, take the Bad Moon Yellow and just apply it all over the top of the feathers. Like so. And we wash the brush. Grab some Striking Scorpion Green. Apply 
apply it all over the top. Wash the brush. Grab a little bit more Bad Moon Yellow. And then use that to blend two colors together, like that. So with that now done, what we're going to do is we're going to take some thin down Dawnstone and we're going to apply this over the orb around our blue on this scepter. And with that Dawnstone applied, we're then going to take some thin down Retributor armor and we're going to apply this over top of all of our remaining details. And so for the last time in this video, we're going to take some Reichlin Flesh Shade and we're going to use this to shade all of the gold. And with that done, we're then going to take some Null Oil. We're going to apply this over our Dawnstone. So with that done, Croak himself is now what I would call a war hipster battle ready. And he's looking pretty cool. However, we're not going to leave him there. No, we're going to add some highlights to finish off this whole enterprise. So. Luckily, really we only need to do the highlights kind of cutting off around about here because when he sits in his chair, you won't see any of the back. Now you can do the back, but for example, if we just pop him off the base just for a second, and just kind of slot it in rather poorly there because he's not normally on a 40 mil, you'll see that you're not gonna really get in these angles. Of course, he's at a jaunty, jaunty angle. So you don't have to do all of the highlights here, but for posterity, I probably will do all of them, just for the sake of argument. <laughs> so the first color that we're gonna be using is some thinned down deepkin flesh. And we're gonna use this to highlight all of Croak's skin. what little of it remains. So with that deep kin flesh all applied, what we're then going to do is we're going to take some thins down Night Quest of Flesh. And we're going to use this to highlight all of the bandages. So with that all done, what we're then going to do is we're going to take some thin down Lothern Blue. I'm going to use this to highlight the scepter.
With that lother and blue applied, we're then going to take once again some Baharos blue. I'm going to add this to the sharpest points of the teeth and to the scepter. So with that now done, what we can do is we can take some thin down Dawnstone and we can use this to highlight both the scepters. With that then done, we then take a little bit of administratum gray and we use this to just pick out this spike. And so with that done, we're then gonna take some thinned down Liberator Gold. I'm going to use this to highlight, well, all of the gold. So with all of that gold highlighted, I've accidentally pinged him off the base, but that's okay because we've only got a couple of things left to do. And one of those is to take some Dark Angel's green and apply this over these gems in his eyes. And just to finish him off, we're going to take some Talisar Blue and then apply this over the rest of his small gems. He's got these ones at the top of the headdress. And the ones dangling off his shoulders on his back. And so with those gems all finished, Lord Croak has been added to the base with just a dab of super glue and the model looks absolutely fantastic. Even if I do say so myself. And so all that's left to do is the base and I'm not gonna film all of it because, well, this video is long enough, but I will describe it for you. What we're going to do is we're gonna take some Sterling Battlemire and apply this all over the negative space and then once it's fully dry we'll give it a dry brush of some tyrant skull yep really original from me <laughs> and then we'll add some tufts from gamers grass and we'll be done with lord croak at long last and so here we are at the end of all things wait that's the wrong universe here we are at the conclusion of croak and this has been a hell of a journey i was intimidated by this model the day i got it and i've been waiting ever since to kind of get over that and finally found the confidence and here we are lord croak in all of his glory ready to well just put more wounds everywhere i guess that's what he's really really good at if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to support me a little bit further, you absolutely can do. Head over to patreon.com forward slash warhipster, just like all of these wonderful, amazing people have done. And you can also become a YouTube channel member, 
Just like this incredible bunch of folks scrolling up on the screen before you, there's a hell of a lot of you. And, well, I can't do this without you. YouTube and Patreon, you guys absolutely keep the lights on and make all of this worth it. Thank you so much to all of you for everything you do. And if you really like this video and you just want to shoot me a little thanks, you can click on the thanks button just below this video. Don't forget to share it, like it, comment on it, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And to make sure you stay up to date, don't forget to click the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all very soon in the next one. Happy Wargaming.